Can the wheel of NHL cover athletes build me a Stanley Cup winning team? Let's find out. Been thinking about doing an NHL cover athlete team for a while. Couple problems. One being there's obviously a lot to choose from. The other problem is there is not a lot of defensemen to choose from, but we don't actually need six defensemen to build a team. So I put every single NHL cover athlete that is available for me to use in this game on a wheel. We're going to spin it 18 times for the skaters, and then we have a separate one with goalies. That will build us a team that we will take into three seasons and try and win as many Stanley Cups as possible. That being said, it's first spin time. Show me the money. There's obviously not many bad names on here. There's only like a couple bad overalls. Jeremy Roenick is not one of them. He is the first player. He was on the cover of NHL 2K3. And we're just going to keep spinning until we have a team. So spin number two. Like I said, there's there's a couple uh interesting names as we get Steven Stamkos. Not everyone on here is super overpowered, but a lot of them are. Let's be honest. Spin at number three. I mean, I don't know. There's obviously Lemieux, so he'd probably be the best option. There's no Gretzky. Hey, speak of the devil and he shall appear. Mario Lemieux on the third spin. We're already winning a cup now. I went with EA Sports and NHL 2K games only. So maybe I'm dumb and miss something. That's probably the reality, let's be honest. But number four is Pronger, one of the only defensemen on the wheel, so that's actually clutch. I really want uh, Scott Stevens in the next game, please and thank you. Stevens and Dominic Hasek, and I'll never bug you again. Spin number five, what do we got? Who are we taking over? We are taking Thornton. So one of the worst spins on the wheel. I mean, I love me some Joe Thornton, but he's only an 80 overall, so he's not exactly the best option here. In fact, one of the worst, like I said. So spin number six, I mean, we're definitely building a good team. No matter what, we're coming out with a good team here. Let's be honest. It's hard to mess this up. Eric Lindros, the year that I was born. So Eric Lindros was my cover athlete, I guess. Spin number seven, if I math correctly, which I probably didn't, because that's like a Recurring theme here, we get Ryan Kessler, which is the worst choice on the wheel. By far, I knew this was going to happen. On the cover of 2K11, and he was on the cover of another one, probably 2K12, I think. Or maybe it was 2K Mobile. That might have been what it was. I don't think there was a 2K12. I think 2K11 was the last one. At number eight, we're making progress. We're, we're definitely building a team. It's starting to get worse every time. Patrice Bergeron, though, helping me. Feel a little bit more confident. NHL 15, the worst NHL game of all time. When you're literally missing one of the biggest modes in the game completely. You kind of put that on yourself. Especially coming after NHL 14, which was one of the best ones they've ever made. Spinning again, spin number nine. What do we have? We have, oh, interesting. We got Zach Parise, which once again is one of the worst options. NHL Supercard is an NHL game on mobile, specifically card base, which is why it's called Supercard. And it was made by 2K, so I included those cover athletes on here as well. Not good for our team, but a little bit of lore here, I guess. Player number 10, who do we got? There's still some absolute bangers on here. Jason Spezza, I love you, Spezza. You are not an absolute banger. You're like an 80 overall max. This is going very poorly. I'm not even going to lie. Like, with the players on here, not going the best. Spin number 11. We're look, we want McDavid, obviously. We want Matthews. We will definitely take an Eric Stahl, but once again, one of the worst options on there. We're just getting the bottom tier players. Still great players, especially IRL, but in the game, not so much. I'm starting to get desperate. I need I need a big name. Tarasenko will do for sure. Vladimir Tarasenko, NHL 17 cover athlete. We're slowly but surely running out of time. McDavid, no, it was one off. We're getting Claude Giroux, which isn't something I feel like we already got all the bad options, honestly. Like, wouldn't surprise me at all. Come on, show me the money. Is that Forsberg? It's Peter Forsberg. NHL 98 cover star. Also, NHL 13 was like goaded. I loved NHL 13. Only four spins remaining. Show me Connor McDavid, please, and thank you. Would be very helpful. That's all I'm saying. Oh, Vetchkin will do. I'll take an Ovi. NHL 07, I don't know what NHL game was like the one you played the most in your childhood, but mine was NHL 05 with Marcus Naslin for sure. On the good old GameCube, spam that thing so much. So I kind of want to get him just for the nostalgia purposes, but I'll definitely take Ovechkin for some reason. Three spins left. McDavid? If we get McDavid, it's over. It's that Sundin. Speaking of nostalgia purposes, my favorite player of all time, Matt Sundin, is on the NHL 2K6 cover. Only in Canada and Europe, though. USA had a different cover. Two more spins. Two more chances at McDavid. 
And we're getting Sakic or Ginla. It's going to be Sakic. NHL 04. Definitely a great addition. Like I said, I think we're basically out. Unless we get Kyle Turris. The final spin is Kyle Turris. I'm going to break my kneecaps. I'm going to be disappointed. It's spinning. Not Kyle Turris. Uh, oh, Nolan or Eisman? Eiserman. We're getting Steve Eiserman. So no Connor McDavid. That kind of bites. We got Lemieux. We got Ovechkin. We definitely have a team brewing. Eiserman, NHL 96 cover athlete. Now switching over to goalies, I only noticed five goalies that were actually in the game, so we definitely have options. Good options, I should say. Like, anything here is good. Broder is obviously the best, and that's who we're getting. Fat W, NHL 14. Like I said, one of the best NHLs ever made. IMO, NHL 13 and 14. We're absolutely amazing. And our final spin, Broder's backup. Who do we got to choose from? Let's see it. Andy... And this is the team that the Wheel of Cover Athletes has built me. First line, Ovechkin, Lemieux, Forsberg. Second line, Lindros, Sakic, Eisman. Third line, Ronick, Sundin, Stamkos. And fourth line, Spezza, Thornton, and Parise. Our defense core only has one defenseman. So now we get to look at that. Chris Pronger being the only defenseman. We got Patrice Bergeron on D. Put the team together and the game put people wherever it felt like. And I'm just keeping it where they put it. We got Giroux and Tarasenko as our second pair of defense and our third pair of defense is eric stahl and ryan kessler absolutely terrible and as for offense i mean not too bad we did hit a lot of bad spins we got parise thornton spezza 80 overall max then we got kessler and stahl 78 and 70 we definitely didn't get the best team we could build but i think we can definitely win a cup with it and then broder is gonna have to put the backpack on and carry the squad i think defensively in net and then andy moog the short king will be his backup this is a theme team, so I do want you guys to vote for an MVP. Last episode's MVP was Leon Dreisaitl. He will make his MVP team debut. We have three seasons to go through, so I will see you at the end of year number one. Okay, so we did a little bit better than I was expecting. I know we have like a crazy good team. Not exactly an ideal defensive core, but we still finished 61, 20, and 1 for 123 points, top of the NHL. Thankfully, we got Mario Lemieux, 50 goals, 61 assists for 111 points. Peter Forsberg behind him in points by only three with 108. Then we go a little bit below 199 points for Vetchkin, who also dropped 45 goals, so he's only five behind Lemieux. Then Saki with 80, and then we start getting to the 60s and then the 50s. How many 20 goal scores did we have? That's what I want to know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's the most we've seen yet in any sim. Let's gonna look at how our defense did, but uh, we only have one defenseman technically, and it was Chris Bronger, nine goals, 29 assists for 38 points, and a plus 49, and he had 64 penalty minutes. Goaltending Broder had to play 63 games. He won 44 of them, had two shutouts, a 9-1-0 save percentage, and a 2.49 goals against average. And Andy Moog, 17 wins in 20 games, only three losses, getting a shutout on 9 0 7 save percentage. And a 2.37 goals against average. A great time to say we already have our two MVP goalies, so we can't vote for a goalie as MVP. Alice stars in the first round. I feel like, I mean, with the season we have, we're winning the cup, right? We have to. We win, we lose, we lose. Well, I'll just shut up. I guess six to five overtime loss. Game four is important, and we lose. So, like, one of the best seasons in NHL history just to lose in the first round. We win in overtime in game number five. We just have to steal two more games from Dallas. We steal game number six. And game seven, best of one series. Winner moves on, and it is us with a 9-2 to two W. We absolutely dominated them. The offensive defenseman, quite literally, got a little scary in that series, but we move on. We're fine. We're facing Colorado, so a tougher task in round two. We win game one. I don't know why I only simmed one game. Uh, we win game two, but we lose game three, six to five. We're up two to one, so that's great. We're up three to one, so as long as we don't do what Dallas did, Moving on to the conference finals, and that's exactly what's happening. We face Vancouver in the conference final. We win, we win, we win. Can we go to the Stanley Cup finals in our first year? We absolutely can. We sweep Vancouver. Looks like we might be facing Columbus, so that would be a free cup, I'd say. And that is exactly what's happening. They could shock us, but not expecting it to happen. But you never know in this game. First three games, we win, we win, we win. Can we sweep the Stanley Cup finals? We sure can with a 6-5 to five overtime win, and we... Our Stanley Cup champions in year number one. Mew, 28 points to lead the team. 22 assists, only six goals. Ovechkin dropped 13 to lead the team in goals. Bergeron had eight on defense, which is pretty hype, I'd say. 10 for Sackett, who was second on the team for points with 24. And then his teammate, Forsberg, right behind him with 23. Stronger three goals, one assist for four points. 
plus four, 16 penalty minutes, not doing a whole lot, but I'm sure he definitely locked it down defensively. Broder, a 9-1-0 save percentage at 2.29 goals against average, three shutouts for 15 wins, but we played Andy Moog for 46 minutes, and he saved 18 of 19 shots faced, 9-4-7 save percentage, and a 1.3 Goals against average with a dub. I believe the MVP of this team is probably going to be Lemieux because he's not actually on the MVP team yet. He was on the first one, so maybe you don't want to vote for him to be there again. But he's absolutely dominating. He won the Smythe, He won the Lady Bing. He won the Art Ross. And he won the Heart. So it's kind of hard to say no to him in the first season. 19 points. Once again on top of the NHL. Speaking of once again on top, Lemieux 110 points. 47 goals for most on the team. Not even close, Ovechkin was the closest with 36 goals. And Forsberg closest in points with 101. Broder had to play 60 games. 140 of them had 5 shutouts, a 914 save percentage, and a 2.33 goals against average. Andy Moog, winning 18 of his 27 games, played a 908 save percentage and a 2.38 goals against average with one shutout. Facing Chicago in the first round of the second season, can we do it? Can we do the elusive 3 p 3-1 on Chicago right now. 9-1 win in game number 4. So kind of a statement game, I'd say, and we easily beat them in game number five to move on to the second round. Once again, talking about a three-peat a little too early because this is just the second year. I shouldn't be worrying about it yet. St. Louis in the second round. We win, we lose, we lose. So we're down two to one for very important. And we win two to one. So the series is tied. In game five, we win seven to six in overtime. An absolute slug fest. We prevail. We have two chances to put away St. Louis. We do it in the first try, a three to two win. Conference final bound once again, and it's the Winnipeg Jets. First three games against Winnipeg, we win, we win, and we win. So that's a pretty good sign. I think it's safe to say we're going back to the Stanley Cup Finals, but we lose game four, so it's not a sweep. But we win game five, three to two in overtime, when we face Tampa Bay in the Stanley Cup Finals this time around. So a little bit more competition. Shouldn't be a sweep, but easily could be. See what happens. We lose, we lose, but we steal. Game three, four to three in overtime. So we're not out yet. We need game four though to tie the series, which we do another four to three win. So it's best of three series now. Anything can happen. We win five to four and we are one game away once again from raising the cup. Show me the money. That is the money. Six to three win. We are going back to back Stanley Cup champions. And it's thanks to these two men, Lemieux and Ovechkin. Lemieux, 43 points in 22 playoff games, 17 goals. 26 assists, and then Ovechkin also dropping 17 goals with 16 assists for 33 points. Hey, Ryan Kessler scored once on D on the third line, so shout out to him. Looking at goalies, looking at 16 wins for Broder, so he won all the games. 906 save percentage, 2.46 goals against average, and two shutouts. Played Moog for one game. He lasted 44 minutes. Uh, he did not do good. 842 save percentage and a 4.05 goals against average. Unsurprisingly, back-to-back consmice for Lemieux. I feel like he's a lock. For the MVP spot but it's hard to say right and now we can start worrying about the three-peat because we move into our third and final season third and final season 61 13 and 8 record for 130 points so we get the president's trophy every single season see we can get the cup every single season and Ovechkin finally passes Lemieux for most points getting 96 points dropping 38 goals for 58 assists Lemieux having one more goal with 39 Sakic also in the 30s with 32. Pittsburgh was third on the team with 90 points, but only 17 goals. If you're looking at Pronger, 11 goals, 14 assists for 25 points, plus 33, 59 penalty minutes. And Broder, 91 save percentage, 2.18 goals against average, 51 wins in 66 games played, 8 shutouts as well. And Moog only playing 17 games, 110, had 3 shutouts, and a 919 save percentage, and a 2.28 goals against average. So great goaltending all around. We're playing Winnipeg once again. First three games, we lose, we lose, we win. Okay, so not the start we wanted, but it's the start we got. We can come back. We can't lose to Winnipeg. I mean, we can lose to Winnipeg, but I prefer not to. We win one to nothing in game number four. So we do tie the series. We do lose game number five, though, so we're one loss away from a first round exit. Not ideal, but it is what could happen. Our three-peat could be over just like that. It's not what happens. Two to nothing win. Game number seven, please. EA gods, show me love for once in your life. Give us this game seven victory. There it is. Seven to two W. Three Pete alive. This would be our third three Pete. So we'd three Pete a three Pete. Like I said, we've done so many Sims. It's actually pretty crazy how hard it is to do. We're facing Colorado in the second round. First three games, a W and two L's. So not a great start here either. But we come back from those. Apparently we don't. A two to one L to Colorado. We have to win three in a row, or we don't get three in a row. Stanley Cups, that is. We win three to two, 
Game number five. Game number six is a five to four win. So we get two of the three. Game number seven once again. And it's a W. A three to one lead choked by the Colorado Avalanche. We move on to the conference finals. Conference finals. Edmonton Oilers for, I believe, the first time. So we're definitely going to have our hands full here. Can we beat the Edmonton Oilers? We win. We win. We win one game away. So unless we're getting reverse sweep, we're going back to the Stanley Cup finals. It's not happening. But we are seeing Tampa Bay again, so we have to earn our 3 P. We have to earn it. For history, for our third ever 3 P in NHL 22, 3-2-1. Book it. Give it to us. We win. We win. We win. We have to choke a 3 to nothing lead. It's not going to happen. Mario Lemieux and Alex Ovechkin on the same team is just apparently unbeatable. 4-2 to two win. We have done it. We survived two game sevens, and we claim our third three-peat of the year. Thanks to these two men, and obviously the rest of the team helping as well, but Lemieux and Ovechkin cracked out of their minds. Forsberg only one point behind Ovechkin this time around with 26, dropping seven goals, but Ovi most goals on the team with 11, 16 assists for 27 points, and Lemieux right behind him in goals with 10, beating him in points with 29. Maritime Broder played every single game in the playoffs. He got three shutouts, obviously getting 16 wins, a 9-1-3 save percentage, and a 2.17 goals against average. He was definitely a big factor in our win today. And Lemieux captured every single con Smythe. He's looking like the favorite for MVP, but it is once again up to you to vote. Everyone on the team, I believe, is available. But that is it. Can the wheel of NHL cover athletes build me a Stanley Cup winning team? They absolutely can. Our third three-peat of the year. I am pumped. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.